Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. This is episode six. I'm Hyam. I'm in the box, but we have different boxes today. Tom is over there somewhere. I don't know where it is. And we have a special guest. Infosec Sherpa is somewhere else. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. So, so I got a Mastodon uh, uh, request a few weeks ago. Infosec <laughs> Sherpa goes, I got a lot of problems with you people right around Festivus. And I said, I want to hear about the problems that you have with specifically us. <laughs> and we talked and talked and talked. And I told her, let's wait. We're, we're, we're starting this new podcast. Why don't you come on and you tell us the problems? Because we want to hear about these problems. So what problems do you have with us today? And I feel like it merits mentioning that the the graphic I chose to accompany my Mastodon post was a scene from Family Guy where Peter has a local, uh, was it a local TV show or whatever, the local news. He had a spot that was called, you know, What Grinds My Gears. And that's exactly, I was, you know, that's what I was thinking. And that's what I would like to eventually have as my own podcast where I can just have an airing of grievances every week or so. But um, what I decided to talk about for today in the next 30 minutes is it, it's it's kind of a couple pronged uh, so, uh, thing that we need to address in the community. And it uh, surrounds education and certs. I could divide them out, but I really think they're closely intertwined. There's a lot of gatekeeping going on there's a lot of swindling going on. There was a drama recently about somebody just taking money from folks who paid for a boot camp. Um, there's a lot of problems with the hiring process, you know, with an entry level job requiring a CISSP. So we have a real education cert qualification problem in InfoSec, and that is what I want to talk about uh so do you want me just to ramble on or do you i want to interject any questions or comments i, I only have one comment wait a, <laughs> a cissp for an entry level position really oh yeah yeah you haven't wow. seen it yeah there's no been, yeah i and what i so we'll we'll start there so what's been problematic for folks trying to get into the industry and i noticed this when i was trying to get into the industry for the first time a few years ago there's these unrealistic requirements and expectations for lower level cybersecurity infosec jobs. Now, some argue, well, infosec is not a beginner's career. Okay, Don Draper, that may have been true uh, in the past, but anymore, you know, we need warm body, okay? And they have to start somewhere. And you also have lots of folks like myself who are career changers who bring a different skill set into InfoSec. And, you know, and then that can also tail off into the education and the certs and all, but we'll get back, we'll, we'll get there shortly. Um, so I can see both sides of it, but I just feel like that's antiquated thinking, that it's not an entry level position. You know, obviously you're not going to to hire a brand new person for a senior level position. You don't do that anywhere. So I don't know why this is such a big, uh, you know, bone to pick that everybody has. So that just, it's really irritating and frustrating. And, you know, especially this affects underrepresented groups. You know, they're, go they're already going to have a harder time, you know, getting through the hiring process. And, and, you know, to to disqualify someone, you know, who's just trying to get into the industry and they can't even get an interview, excuse me, is we're not we're we're shooting ourselves in the foot, basically, with with this whole thing. So, you know, and I'm tired of seeing like, well, I didn't go to college or, you know, I have a um what's the what's that high school certification? I apologize, I'm blanking on the name. The uh what's the high school equivalency? Oh, a GD. Thank you. Sorry, I was completely <laughs> blanking on the the letters. Um, you know, like stop, stop comment, like stop judging people for what they have or they don't have. Plenty of people can get the skills that they need for infosec without going to college. Okay. <laughs> now, now I, on the other hand, I have three college degrees. I have an associate's, I have a bachelor's, and I have a master's. Because the industry that I came from required that. 
entry le- so I had to have a master's degree to get a librarian job and that was the industry standard and you know there was also arguments in that area about well you know what why, why can't someone who's just worked at a library for a long time not be considered a librarian but I'll have, I I do tell you though honestly that's not so much of a divider in library world because most people just get the master's degree because that's what gets you places and gets you hired. Um, I mean, I know for a fact that I worked with people as a, li- as a librarian, I worked with people who, yeah, didn't have college and didn't, didn't have this master's degree in library science, but they were making the same amount or more than, you know, than as me, uh, just be, you know, because of their length of, of service and their tenure. So I just, I just think, um, sorry, and remember, I'm, I'm working on a head cold here. So if I start to like stray, like pull, pull me back, <laughs> Tracy, you're not making sense. Come back, come back. Um, so it's just, it's just really frustrating uh, to me that we were so analytical and just so judgmental, I should say, about whether or not someone has a degree or not. Uh, and then what it is every once in a while you would see, you know, I have a liberal arts degree. What degree do you have? And then everybody comes out again. And like, all right, like we all come from different majors. It it doesn't matter. I have a history undergrad degree, you know, and some people say, well, how is that good useful for InfoSec? There's a lot of analytical skills when you go back and you read things from history and then you have to interpret them or you understand, you know, uh, especially if you get into wars and things like that, you get into strategy and you also get into, you know, learning about other cultures and the way other people think. And I think history is a very appropriate major to have. And I don't know if you remember, it was the, I'm going to draw a blank of the name again. The the company that was popped, it began with an EX. It was um, Experian. Is that the one I'm mm, thinking of? Yep. The credit, um, yeah, Experian. Yeah, the, the credit thing, yeah. Um, their CISO at the time uh, ha- was someone who had music degrees. And I remember uh, she had- I think you know, we, we brought that up. I think we yeah. talked about that. That yeah, we were like, it, we shouldn't make fun of the music degree or who yeah. cares about the music degree? Well, yeah. yeah. And I, and I, <laughs> I took a journalist to task on, on Twitter about it. I was like, I, I was like, you know, and whatever breach was also active at the time. I'm like, well, what was that, that male CISO's major? Well, I don't know. Well, why do you know the woman, the woman, the woman CISO's yeah. major? Um, but also to her, to the point of her technical skill, music is a technical, you know, a technical activity, a technical discipline. She had a master's degree, not in performance, but something like psalm structure. So I guarantee you, she understood network engineering better than a lot of people because she still had that same skill set. It just looked different. So that infuriated me. Um, and I welcome the day that someone tries to drag me for my history and library science degrees because I will take you to, you know, I will school you on that, on how my liberal arts background and library science background has, you know, made me successful and have good insight in this industry. So, so that's the one thing that I'm, I'm just tired of hearing about of, you know, just it doesn't matter what degree you have. And, you know, can we please as a nation stop? making fun of community colleges it 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 upsets me that you know for some people it's the best choice either financially or time wise or location wise um case in point my my neighbor i was talking to her the other day her daughter's a senior in high school um you know definitely was you know wanted to go to the far flung you know ends of the earth to go to college you know as most you know kids that age want to do. And my, my neighbor said, I was talking to her about getting her first two years of requirements mm-hmm. out of the way at the community college, and then go somewhere where you can just concentrate on, you know, you know, whatever study she wants to do. Um, and, you know, a lot of community colleges are, you know, really good schools. I mean, I know in Pennsylvania, where I am, I know that the community colleges in the Philadelphia area are good schools. And I, I said this on another podcast, I would hire someone, like if I was a hiring manager, I would have no qualms hiring someone who went to a community college and had good grades, 
um, and also worked and also had a family. Because you know what they have? Time management skills. <laughs> I have yet to meet, um, you know, I'm sure there's always exceptions, but I'm just saying my personal experience. I have yet to meet a, a college grad who didn't have to work, you know, who had things funded, who kind of, you know, who did a lot of extracurriculars, don't necessarily have time management skills. Where, where you get into that is you get into your college athletes. If they were a college athlete, you and you know, and they had a good grade point average and whatnot, you know that they were time doing time management and also the the teamwork aspect and things like that. So, I, I feel like there's a lot of aspects of of education that our community seems to dismiss. And I, I know that maybe the, the athlete part might be because with the exception of myself, we're not really a sporty bunch, are we? As I sit here with my Sixers <laughs> hat on, I literally have the Sixers game on my iPad and I'm wearing my, my Sixers hat and, and the Sixers farm team t-shirt. So I am nice. very much into sports, but I don't know that the rest of our community who may not be sports uh, inclined really understand that a student athlete really has to manage their time, manage high pressure situations, you know, especially like playing the sport. And those are big stakes, right? We have, you know, a hundred something thousand football arenas, you know, football stadiums that, you know, these 18 year olds are expected to perform in. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I would take an athlete. I would take someone who was juggling, you know, work and community college at the same time. and when I said that on the podcast, one of the hosts was a community college graduate who said he was always very embarrassed by, you know, by that. And I was like, oh no, you need to be proud. I'm like, I'm like, no, like that, you know, and, and it was true. He had family obligations. He had a job as well. I was like, oh no, 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 don't, don't discount yourself, you know, because some bozo got to, you know, go to a four-year liberal arts college and didn't have to work, didn't have to take out loans, had everything, you know, covered for them and didn't really do anything other than like, you know, hang out around campus. Cause I guarantee we probably all know someone <laughs> like that, but I mean, basically, you know, there's, I'm going to, I always butcher this quote by Arthur Ashe, but it's, you know, you know, start, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can is basically the gist of it. That's how we need to approach applicants in infosec of okay like where are you now you know oh okay you used to be um you know a nurse's aide but you took all the you know you you took all these comp tia classes or you know classes and have these certs and you know maybe you did two years of computer science at a community college or something like that like too many people are focusing on the nurse's aide part <laughs> and i also give kind of the the converse advice to job seekers you need to take a moment and figure out what your transferable skills are. Mm -hmm. So if it was a nurse's aide, then, you know, empathy, attentiveness, medications, you know, following directions, whatever it is that you, you've done. And I tell people, especially if fast food, if you've ever worked in fast food, you can absolutely pull out transferable skills from that. Again, working under pressure, dealing with money, dealing with end users, customers, you know, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, cleaning, properly cleaning of all the equipment. So following instructions and things like that. Transferable skills is how you present yourself. And then people should be regarding them of where are they now? Okay, I'm not going to dwell on their past. I, oh, I'm curious to see how you got here, but I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to judge you for how you got here. You're here now. So let me, let me take a pause on that and take a sip and you tell me what, what you think of my uh, first part of my ranting. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, like, I, I don't discount anything you've said at all, but I'm, I'm just flabbergasted that something as, you know, uh, self-reportedly open and embracing as the hacker community would have so many of these hangups, like classical hangups when it comes to hiring people. Uh, you know, at least from what we like to self-profess, the, the hacker community has been open to anyone who is willing to learn, even if they're completely ignorant of the field or, or the technology involved, if you are willing and able to learn, uh, you know, the hacker community is supposed to uh, embrace you and see you through. And it's, it's kind of disheartening to hear that there are so many of these hangups. Uh, you know, what, 
personally, and I don't know if I've even ever mentioned this on the show, uh, I have I have one piece of paperwork. I have a high school diploma that I got by literally passing by 1%. I had a 66% in my one class, and that's it. I have no college degree. I, I have specifically avoided getting certs because it's kind of a messed up badge of honor to say that I have literally no papers. Uh, and, you know, I, I have worked for <laughs> very large tech companies in a in like engineering uh, field. Um, and I've done a lot of interviewing and honestly, where a person's college degree comes from, or even if they have one, is the last thing on my mind. The first thing on my mind is, hey, can they navigate a Linux box and read log files and, you know, figure out where a problem is? That is my first and only do that. concern. Yeah. But I can yeah. do that. <laughs> exactly. And you would get hired. Yeah. Okay. So and... if I if I may, may I just, I want to address. So I think your surprise is because, keep in mind, the folks do for the majority of the hiring that's done or the placing of ads, they're not the hacker community. That's you true. Know? So, um, you know, you're talking about HR professionals who are completely out in another industry. Um, you know, obviously they have to confer with the hiring manager for these job postings, but I also have to imagine that once it leaves, you know, the hiring manager's hands and goes into HR, they're going to put, you know, whatever they think. Cause I have a hard mm. time believing that a hiring manager is really going to put, oh yeah, we might as well have them have a CISSP as well. I, I cannot believe that that's happening. So, so you're, you're right. The hacker community is very welcoming of all, but they are not necessarily the ones doing the hiring, writing the job descriptions, but and also remember there's the hacker community and then there's, information security professionals. Yeah. And I've worked with a lot of these. They're just nine to fly, nine to five, clock in, clock out. I don't go to cons. I don't, I'm not on Twitter. I don't have a hand, you know, I don't have a handle or anything. Um, and that's fine too. I'm not judging them. I'm just saying that that's, you know, they're not a part of it. So I think that's what a lot of people for, forget. And so I'm not, I'm not chastising you. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just oh, saying no, that I, I, I think that there, there's a lot more divisions in our industry because community and industry are two different things. Mm -hmm. And even within the community, there are divisions. So yeah, you're right. At its very heart, you know, like a ShmooCon, I, when I went to ShmooCon, I was still technically a librarian in 2016. And I, I was scared to tell people that I was a librarian because I didn't know what was, you know, what the reception would be. Um, and it was amazing. People I'll interrupt you. We yeah. love librarians on the show. <laughs> if you've never heard Thank the, you. I, we pray, I, me personally, and I know Thomas, we praise librarians as the smartest people alive <laughs> almost every time we can. Because again, I'm at the crypto, crypto and privacy village and we love librarians because they are the most <laughs> private people you can imagine if they want to be. Yeah, or, or like they're, especially uh, public librarians are are very aware of, uh, of of like you know privacy rights and uh, you know like with the checkouts and things like so true story when I was a librarian on a college campus there was a book that was checked out actually did that happen oh this has happened more than once um, but yeah one time I was working as a college librarian um, and there was a book checked out that a professor needed and he was just like well we'll look up and see who has it and then you know give that to me and I'll contact them. And I'll ask for the book. I'm like, oh, no, n no, 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 no. That's not how this works. And then he's like, well, then all right, then you contact them. No, that's not how this works. They are allowed to have it for three weeks. When it comes back in three weeks, you know, you can get on the, the wait list and get it. Um, that happened with attorneys a lot was, oh, just, you know, just go take that from that. I'm, I'm not taking that I'm not attorney. That is their book. Um so yeah, like and and librarians also, you know, we have information management that we're trained on, um, but yeah, a lot of those those privacy rights, um, like, and I can give you an example. When I was on um, an interview once, I I went I went on an interview at a seminary, so it was a Catholic seminary, and they asked me how I would handle a situation. I said, okay, what's the situation? And they said someone comes in 
they go, over, you know, they go to the reference desk and they just start talking to you about how they can't believe all these priests are being arrested and punished, uh, you know, for their dealings with children. Like they're like they're, you know, they're on the side of the of the the uh, predator for this. So then they said, so how would you handle that? I said I would, you know, escort them to a, a, one of the computers, kind of, you know, you know, away, away from me. I, I just anyway, I would escort them to one of the computers, and I'd say, would you like to read more, you know, in, information from that point of view? Um, I wasn't judging, you know, inside of my head, maybe I was judging, but um, <laughs> outwardly, I wasn't judging. I was merely connecting them to information. Now, I know some people might disagree with that, but you have to understand if you're a librarian, you can't show bias. That's not your place. Now, you can speak up if you think something might be dangerous, um, especially if there's been incidents in the library that maybe a certain book or material is causing problems. But yeah, I didn't agree with his point of view, uh, but I didn't want to sit and listen to you know his rhetoric. And also I, I didn't want him to disturb the other patrons. And when I finished giving my answer, the, the head uh, librarian leaned over and looked down the table at someone else and said, why couldn't you have handled it that way? And I was like, whoa, you didn't need to call her oh out. <laughs> um, and I found out that the librarian that got chastised in front of me, which again was very inappropriate, um, she was arguing with him. And I was like, oh no, I know better than that. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not arguing with him. So yeah, that's why I feel like librarians have a very unique perspective in InfoSec. So anyway, back to what I was, was saying is um, yeah, so there's this whole education thing. And let, let's touch upon certs for a second. So I wanna I know that there are many people like you who take take pride in you know, the, the no badge of honor. <laughs> and that's, for and that's worth, what. for what it's worth. I have my sec plus that Tom okay. told me to take <laughs> that I just took and passed that I'm not using, but I have it. <laughs> but, but let me, let, let me share something with you, how it can help now. For, forgive me, but as two white males, mm -hmm. you are going to have a very different job hunting interviewing experience. Yes. Okay, so yes, absolutely. Um, so if you consider people from underrepresented groups or myself, a woman coming from library world, um, you know, we need those that proof uh, mm -hmm. that we have that knowledge. So, you know, the cert game being uh, obnoxious with the cost, that's a different <laughs> situation. Um, but the cert itself, yeah, like I, I don't like these comments of, of derision. I'm not accusing either of you of mm -hmm. having that. But what I see online of like, you know, oh, like, oh, they got a CISSP, like, you know, uh, like why, why even bother or whatever. Well, you don't know that person's story. You know, I, why do I have three college degrees? Because it took me nine years to get a two-year associate's degree because I didn't have any confidence. I didn't have any money. <laughs> I didn't have any emotional support until I met my now husband. I had four credits left to get an associate's degree. And he was just like, Oh, we're, we're, you're getting this done. Like we're, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get this done. Cause four credits seemed insurmountable to me. I legitimately thought I'm like, I'm never going to finish this degree. I have four credits left. It, it, it was two classes. It was a three credit and a, and a one credit health class or something. Um, so you, you don't know people's situations. And then the reason why, because that because some people will ask me, they're like, well, why do you have an associate's and a bachelor's? Lady, because I didn't think I would ever get a bachelor's. I was about to say a curse word. I remember you said that. You know, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I had a pause. Dramatic pause was don't curse. Okay. Um, I already messed up like the second episode of, of the new network. <laughs> so. But I didn't think I would ever get a bachelor's degree. So I wanted to cash out with something because that was a source of pride for me that I wanted to have a degree. Well, it turned, you know, turns out I wound up getting two more, but I didn't know that. Um, so that's why I get really frustrated about the whole cert thing and the degree mm -hmm. things like you you're judging people for you know they 
a per an underrepresented per you know a under community underrepresented community person you know may have a harder time you know getting getting their resume reviewed but if they have and especially me coming from my liberal arts and library science background you know it was a big gamble that my first company hired me because I didn't have any certs at that time. They sent me to a to Sans boot camp to get the GSEC, which I, you know, which has since lapsed because I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't feel the value of having it renewed. Um, but I was able to to articulate my transferable skills into this role, and they said to me, "We can teach you the tech. We just can't teach." someone all this other stuff you bring to the table and that's how I got my first job in infosec so this is why I'm very passionate about that because um you know it is very hard to get past the screeners I was applying for jobs that you know were saying things like must have excellent research skills I'm like hi <laughs> have that have a master's degree to prove that and I'd still get like the automatic rejection you know because nobody was willing you know to even like ask me what what I had or what I didn't have. So I, I I understand that yes, some of these these certs, you know, can be pricey and that in itself is gatekeeping, right? Mm -hmm. Um so it's complicated and I don't know what the right answer is, but the only right answer I know right now is we need to stop bagging on each other. Sorry, my Gen X is coming out. So, with my, so my antiquated uh, lingo. <laughs> so I wanted to say I'm I'm a high school teacher at a very, yeah. very high performing school district. And mm -hmm. I teach a computer security course modeled awesome. loosely after Sec Plus. And mm -hmm. the one thing I do tell the kids is don't like you said, don't discount the community college. And I said you yeah. have to remember the 40 of you, the 25, the 150 of you, you're competing for Harvard, MIT, Yale, Princeton. But 30% of Americans have a college degree. So the 100% of you are competing for for these things that are that just don't mean anything outside the, just the fact that you have a college degree is meaningful in some way. And the other thing we have it's it's an honors course and one of the things I take pride on is for this security course there's no prerequisite. And everyone's like you have to give a prerequisite and I go why? What where is security in that line? Um mm -hmm. We to to have a good password. What math do you need? I mean, I need you to know how to count. Counting to twenty one is better than counting <laughs> to twenty. Okay. Do you know how to use a computer? There's no course in intro to how to turn on a computer. There's no, we don't have a course intro to into Linux commands. So so well, how do you know if they're smart or not? And I go, who cares? Yeah. If 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 they want to sync, they'll sync. And then in the AP, again, in the AP computer science class, we talk about don't discount community colleges. First, figure out who's paying for your college. Once mm -hmm. you figure that out, then figure out what, if your AP courses are going to count because they take 60, they take 60 AP courses. They bring 60 credits and Princeton takes zero. And I'm like, you could go to Rutgers yeah. and you can have two years done. And mm -hmm. if you can't do that, go to community college and transfer it in. And that, or I tell them, the, I said, you know, we need electricians. You know how many, you know how badly we need electricians. And then finally I go, well, we need also computer in the first day of computer security class. If you can spell computer security, the FBI would like to talk to you. And that's a hundred percent true. Like, what do you mean if you can spell? I mean, literally, if you can spell it, if you know what a strong password is, I'm not saying you're going to get a job, but I'm saying that don't discount the federal government or the army or, and and that's the other problem. We have the, it, like you said, the intro level jobs need five years of experience for what, but I think there has to be jobs there for an entry level uh, tech person to start mm -hmm. with, hey, I want to get into IT, I want to fix computers and then slowly move up the InfoSec yeah. ladder. Yeah, absolutely. So. I mean, I'm. I mean, I know help desk is a good place to start. Um, That's where I started. Yeah, I mean, and it's not for everybody, but I, I, I also think that as an industry and community, we put a lot of emphasis on you know the hacking part. Mm. So you, like you managed, mentioned mm. Linux boxes and stuff like that. Well, you know, my skill set. I, I, I know some of that, but my skill set is more of like the, you know the research. Mm -hmm. type of type of stuff because you know it's important i you know i give conference talks about this it's important to know the provenance of the information provenance you know the origin 
of it. So if you're trying to read up about threat actors and you're reading it from, you know, some anonymous blog, <laughs> that can't, you know, you need to have the sense about you to know what's a, a valid resource and what's not, what are primary sources versus secondary versus tertiary. And, you know, all of that helps to factor in your decisions. Now, I, I am going to assume that most, you know, more tech-minded folks probably don't know what I'm talking about. Some of them were smart and did take liberal arts classes in addition to their comp sci <laughs> classes and, and know that. Um, I went, when I graduated uh, with my associates, there was a guy in my class who was an engineering major with an English minor. And I remember when they called him up for his diploma, they made a joke of like, he's gonna be the only engineer who actually knows how to write a report. And, <laughs> And that, I mean, he la I mean, he laughed too. Um, and I think about that every now and again because that's right. <laughs> we have a we have reports to write, you know. Um, you know, there is writing involved in infosec, and I don't think people ever talk about that enough. And whether it be writing for a playbook, do you know how to write instructions? I took a class in college that it was technical writing. And I think our first assignment was write how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And this professor was ruthless, but it was a good learning experience because it was like, well, you take the slice of bread. Where did you get the bread from? Did you make the bread? How, and then how did you make the bread? Did you buy it from the store? How did you get to the store? How did you decide which sign of bread? And you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So just to get, yeah. And like the whole exercise was like that. So. You know, and and that's a skill that I think is really undervalued in our community and, and industry. And I'd love to see folks, um, you know, again, like, you know, English teachers or English professors or, or someone give conference talks about this. Go over basic grammar and, you know, or just and, and definitely give resources where to find things. I, I'm always, you know, heart going on and on about citations. You know, I, I dislike when I'm in a conference and I see slides and there's no mention of a citation whatsoever. So I'm like, oh, you, I've seen this a thousand places. You just came up with this out of your brain. <laughs> you know, you need to cite things and you need, you know, and it doesn't, I don't care so much about the, the style. I don't care if it's Chicago or MLA or APA or whatever, but you need to, you, you need to tell people where you found stuff. You know, because if if also there's a pattern of, hey, you keep getting information from publications that are deemed to be, um, you know, like like right, you know, rags, like you know, cat tabloids, um, like hey, you might want to rethink that. Um, so so yeah, there there's that. Um, you know, and then let's get into the whole you know cert cost fiasco. Um. You know, yeah, there was someone who was bilking people out of thousands of dollars for a, uh, a a boot camp, and then I see more every every day. I, what I I've kind of what I've been gathering is it sounds like there's a group of people who maybe like took a bunch of certs in six months, and then all of a sudden turn around and opened up like their own boot camp. Mm -hmm. Um, because that that seemed really suspicious to me. Is like, well, who is this? person <laughs> no, like, i never heard of them before now all of a sudden they're running a the boot camp and and all and all they do to make a living is just make money off of the people you know taking the class so we definitely need some better regulation of, of that um but yeah i i don't understand why some certificates are are so much um but i i just i just hate this you know mocking of each other um, you know, and, you know, yeah, some people get a little overboard with putting all their alphabet soup after their name, but you know what, people do that in other industries. That's the thing that cracks me up that I don't think enough people in our, excuse me, industry slash community are aware of, sorry, that's my dog in the background, I don't know if you can hear that, um, is we're not that unique. You know, I think only those of us who came from another industry, you know, there's an expression in French, plus la chose, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, this is not that different than library drama, okay? 
you know, there there is drama and all this kind of shenanigans in every industry. But for some reason, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like InfoSec people act like they invented it. Like they, I always like, oh, you know, InfoSec is such a mess. And I, mean, I there's like, teacher I, drama beyond like what you can believe. Yeah. I mean, everybody has, has this drama and, and I just, it just, it, 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 it makes me laugh slash infuriates me <laughs> that people have this attitude of like, well, I'm going to look for a job in another industry because I can't handle this drama. I'm like, well, you're going to be unemployed because. <laughs> You're not I mean, going to find the unemployment drama, like going to unemployment yeah. will well, cause yeah, that. Too. <laughs> I, oh, mean, well. I mean, I mean, it's, I say that all the time. It's like, you just got to live and learn, do your job and go home. Yeah. Anyway, I want to start wrapping it up because yes. we are at the, yes, the yes, yes. mythical okay. fake 30 minute time. <laughs> well, I hope we'll this was, it was insightful. Thank you for letting me rant all this out. But yeah, I just, I think, you know, we really need to readjust our thinking uh, and just stop judging people. You know, again, consider where they are now and go from there. You know, if they want to offer how they got to that spot, great. You know, just know where they are now and help them get even further. Look, on the show, we we do talk about a lot of the next steps. If you're interested in this, because it is a beginner show, if you want more information, what should you do and how to go about it? And we talk about it without the pieces of paper, show us something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't hire people, but show your hiring manager mm -hmm. what you've done. Show them your GitHub. Show them this. Show them the reason, you're like you said, the soft skills. So, yes, we appreciate I, I mean... I have done a lot of hiring uh, for fairly large tech firms. Um, and I, I can tell you that like, even, even if you don't have pieces of paper, or, or if you do, if you've got a hundred of them listening, so I've interviewed people you know, from nothing to everything to in between, the number one thing that catches my eye is project work. And you can say yeah. like, oh, hey, I built this thing or I bought a Raspberry Pi and I put this stuff together or like, hey, I opened up the, the free AWS account and like it's it's a cheap, crappy server, but I made it do this thing and it does this dance like that is super impressive. If you can just go and show me that you can do the work, even if it's not like the most groundbreaking technical thing in the world that'll get you published in computer science textbooks for years to come. If you can do anything, any kind of project work from beginning to end and document it. That's huge. I've been, I've been champing at the bit to get the have a blog, create yes. a blog to document because that'll help with your writing skills. Um, and yep. that'll get you into the practice of of correlating what you did with your home lab into the written word. Yes, it needs to be documented. It, the, the word is portfolio. You mm -hmm. know, you usually hear portfolio with like advertising or the arts or whatever. InfoSec needs a portfolio. You know, I, I use this thing called Linktree. Uh, anytime I write something, I put a Linktree there. Anytime I have one of my talks, um, I spoke to someone the other day. I started to explain one of my conference talks. He goes, oh, no, I saw your Linktree. I, I, I watched that already. It was great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you need a portfolio. And, you know, get a GitHub, do a home lab. And just, I know we're running short on time. Yeah. When I was trying to get into InfoSec, I also... Uh, did a lot of blog writing for companies. Now, I didn't necessarily get paid for it, which I don't re recommend, but I did what I had to do because that led to more blog posts. So what happens? My name gets attached to these blog posts. So if you Google me, you see me connected to all these cybersecurity companies because I wrote a blog for their website. And then that led to me getting uh, asked uh, interview questions by more esteemed journalists who then included me alongside these people I should not have been included alongside because I carved this niche out for myself. So it can be done, yes. And, and writing and speaking, these skills are just as important as being able, you know, to, to do a, you know, SQL injection. Okay, with that said, we will leave everyone. <laughs> if you like the interview, so this is our first interview. Um, we've done oh. interviews in the past, but on, the, on short explanations, this is our first one. If you like it, let us know. And we say we have a signal group. It's a free signal group. You are free to join it. The good news about our new website is that the link is at the bottom of everything. And with that said, we're going to end. Everyone have a good one, night. And I would like to thank one last oh, thing. One, more. Yeah, one, last one, thing. one last thing. Because this is our first interview, uh, InfoSec Sherpa. 
Where can yes. people find you? Where do you want them yes. to look for you? So I am still very active on Twitter, so I can be reached at uh, Infosec Sherpa on Twitter. Uh, I am on Mastodon as Infosec Sherpa. Uh, I guess it's the Infosec one. I still am not 100% clear on Mastodon. Um, but yeah, and then from there, you can see my link tree. And uh, and also I have a, a newsletter. It's on Medium. So if you go to Medium and look Infosec Sherpa, I do an almost daily roundup of news stories. I try to do it daily. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Uh, but yes, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback uh, because I pull headlines that are kind of flying under the radar uh, because staying on top of news in our in our world is world at large, but also our industry is super duper important. Awesome. Yeah, that was my only one last one. <laughs> because we don't usually do. So with that said, everyone, have a good night and we will see everyone hopefully next week. Go see y'all. <laughs>